Hello viewers, thank you for joining me. April was kind of a weird month. My focus was very scattered. I actually watched and read quite a few things to completion, and I've started at least three scripts for ideas I hope to turn into videos in the near future. But nothing got finished yet. When it became apparent that I'd be kicking off May with another movie, I decided to grab one that's been sitting on my shelf for a while, with no idea of the scope of what I was getting into. I should mention that I hadn't planned on reading the manga, too, but I have no idea what this review would have looked like if I hadn't, because I was kind of at a loss after the movie ended. My main takeaway after that experience was, alright. Either I'm not smart enough for this movie, the creators were on some serious drugs, or both. And I guess both of those things might still be true, but the manga definitely shed light on a few things. So with that introduction... Children of the Sea introduces us to a young girl named Ruka on her first day of summer vacation, a vacation that's looking very different from what she had planned, as she's just been kicked off her sports team for lashing out and hurting one of her teammates. Ruka doesn't really have any friends. She struggles to express herself, something that's likely influenced by her parents' rocky relationship. Her mom's a stay-at-home drunk, and her dad's recently moved out, mocked even by his co-workers for the way he tends to run away from his problems. Not exactly the best role models. But with nothing else to do with her time now, Ruka starts spending her days at the aquarium where her dad works. When she was a kid, she once saw a fish in this aquarium disappear in a flash of light. She'll soon learn that these disappearances are becoming a widespread phenomenon. Fish have been disappearing from aquariums all over the world. Ruka gets to know some of the scientists here who are studying the phenomenon, but first she meets their main project, two boys about her age named Umi and Sora. The main researcher, Jim Cusack, tells her these two were found as toddlers being raised by a pod of dugongs. They've picked up human speech since then, but what's really interesting are the way their bodies have adapted from being raised in the water. Their lung capacity is simply inhuman, and they're able to withstand extreme temperatures and extreme depths. But what really stands out is that they view the world differently. There's a lot of talk about how human language is limited. The researchers and the boys have also been hearing this strange new whale song during their dives. Ruka really connects with the idea that some animals have ways of communicating that convey a lot more than words can, as she's always struggled to find the right words. So, while it feels like she should be living in a different world from these two, it also makes sense that she starts to feel close to them, and ultimately gets sucked into the insanity that's on its way. I'm trying to get through the basics of the story before we have a look at some of the differences between the movie and the manga, but there are some pretty major elements the movie skips over, the manga is full of these little segments they call Testimonials of the Sea, interviews, basically, from people on islands all over the world that are fairly removed from modern society, places where mystical happenings are a little more believable. Which, I want to say, could be a little disorienting at times. I liked the inclusion of the stories themselves, but their placement… they're kinda just thrown in wherever. For a story that could already be a little hard to follow, that's not great. I wish they'd kept them at the beginning or end of each volume or something. Maybe before the recap pages. Anyway, the people in these testimonials talk about their own local legends and things they personally experienced at sea that couldn't be explained by modern science. Other sea children, like Umi and Sora, come up more than once. Most notably, Jim shares a testimony about a sea child he met decades ago, but this boy died in an accident he feels responsible for. This segment is really important for exploring who Jim is and what's driving him, and is left out of the movie completely, I might add. As a whole, these testimonials open up the world, reinforce that what's happening is bigger than just our three kids, even if they are at the center of it. It is what's referred to as the Birth Festival, and this is where things start to get 
difficult and trippy. It starts with a meteorite falling from the sky, which is followed by this mass migration of creatures toward the point in the sea where it landed. Sora had been hospitalized so the researchers could do more tests, but he sneaks out with the help of Anglade, a less traditional scientist who had a falling out with Jim several years ago. But the only thing that rivals the boys' connection to the sea is their connection with each other, so Umi and Ruka go missing too, tracking Sora down. They end up finding him, of course, where the meteorite landed. Sora's been growing weaker lately, so he passes the meteorite along to Ruka for safekeeping, before dissolving back into the ocean. What comes next is the part I'm having some trouble with. The bare basics of what happens are Ruka swallows the meteorite and gains a similar sort of connection to the sea. She is then swallowed by a whale, maybe literally, it's a little unclear, and has some sort of vision where the ocean and outer space converge, before passing the meteorite off to Umi, who also dissolves into something beyond human comprehension. Ruka watches this transformation and gains some sort of unexplained insight about the universe, and is spit back out into the regular sea to be rescued, though she'll never be quite the same. I have to be honest, I'm not really a fan of stories that are super open-ended. The lack of an explanation here is smoothed out a little by all their talk about how some things just can't be conveyed through human speech, but what can I say? I like having answers. So, what is this story really about? Well, everything's been a little oversimplified in this review, so to put it simply, I guess I'd say it's a look into humanity's place in the universe. This is something that's discussed a lot more in the manga. There are a lot of great lines throughout that really made me think. In Volume 2, they talk about dark matter and the greater universe, how 90% of the universe is made of things we can't see, and how our understanding of even what little we can see is shaped by the human experience of those things. Jim is lectured several times about how he limits his own understanding of the world by trying to shove everything he encounters into the neat little boxes of what science understands. Sometimes it felt like Children of the Sea was meant to be one of those human arrogance versus nature stories, but to sum it up like that feels too simple. One line I found particularly interesting was, some people only see Umi and Sora as subjects of an experiment, while others try to confine them to myth. The idea that anything could be confined by myth kind of made me check my own preconceptions, made me feel like I'd fallen into the same pitfall Jim had, trying to cram these events into the neat little box of what I already understood. Maybe some people will look at that and think this series is trying too hard to be deep, but they sure work for the right to justify the tale being open-ended. I have to respect that. This is a really dense story. It is overflowing with research on space, the ocean, both scientific facts and myths from several cultures about the sea and the creation of the universe. I can't believe someone looked at this series and thought, I'm gonna condense this into a two-hour movie. And I do think the movie struggles. So let's get into the success of the adaptation for a bit. I do want to say that the movie is visually beautiful. The animation really stood out to me for this unique texture it has. It was like watching a painting that had come to life. Almost a little off-putting at first to see it in motion, but beautiful once I'd had a few minutes to get used to it. The music is great too. It's really just the story that struggles, and unfortunately that dragged some of the characters down with it. There was a big difference between how Ruka's parents are portrayed in the movie versus the manga. You don't see much of either of them in the movie, but Ruka's dad comes across as a little more reliable, really just for holding down a job and trying to keep track of her while she's there. Ruka's mom barely has a presence at all. But in the manga, Kanako got her own whole little story arc. She was an island girl, raised by a tribe of divers, who ran away with a boy from the city. She has her own testimonial about some kind of mystical experience she had on one of her dives. She remembers making a promise to whatever being she met that day, but can't remember what that promise was. 
That hazy memory has really haunted her ever since, influencing, perhaps, why she grew up to be an alcoholic. She mentions how every time something bad happens in her life, she worries it's divine punishment for breaking whatever her promise was. Her relationship with her daughter is nearly as strained as the one with her husband, but when Ruka goes missing, she jumps into action, going out to sea to look for her while Masaaki, notably, chooses to focus on his job instead and let other people look for his daughter. Umi and Sora are pretty much the same from one version to the next, but Ruka herself was a little harder to understand in the movie. The manga just gives a little more focus to how she struggles to connect with others. In the movie, she has one scene where she's trying to defend herself to her coach and clearly struggling to put the words together, but that's one brief scene compared to all her interactions with Sora, who can be pretty rude, where she never seems to have any trouble expressing herself. I'd seen this movie described as a coming-of-age story, and I guess I was just unclear on the goal. I wasn't totally sure what Ruka was meant to be learning from this adventure. Usually, your main character confronting their own shortcomings is a driving force in a story. With Ruka, it kind of felt coincidental. If anything, it felt like her understanding of the world shifted to justify why she didn't need to change, which is not quite as satisfying. So, while the movie is an amazing visual experience, I think it really struggles to stand alone. The first volume is adapted nearly panel for panel, but as you go on, they start leaving out more and more, leaving the storytelling of the movie feeling really choppy and practically incoherent in places. Even aside from the utter mindfuck of watching the universe creation scene, there were times I was just thrown into the next scene to move the story along, with nothing but some hasty dialogue to explain how we got there. And a lot of what got left out were backstories, things that were really important for explaining what motivated the characters, or in some cases, explaining who they even were. Anglade, the other rival scientist, and Dede, this old sailor who's seen her fair share of unexplainable things at sea, are pretty central to the story, and they both kinda just appear on the beach where the kids find the meteorite in the movie. No explanation of who they are, they're just here now. So I have to recommend the manga over the movie. I can't promise it'll be a quick read. Even only being five volumes long, there's a lot to unpack there but it's worth getting the whole tale, and while the animation of the movie is a high point, it's worth mentioning that the artwork in the manga is no slouch, in an equally beautiful, yet off-putting sort of way. There's a lot of detail on the eyes and lips especially. If Daisuke Igarashi has never made a horror series, he should consider it. Children of the Sea is eerie and mystical and fascinating. Definitely the kind of series that makes you think. I can't promise it will be for everyone, but it is unlike anything I've ever watched or read before. Thank you for watching.